I can tell you that his insinuations or the suggestions in the report uh, about the president's interview just simply don't correspond with my recollection of how that interview went. And I frankly don't understand why they're in the report. President Biden's personal lawyer publicly criticized the report from special counsel Robert Hur after its release last week. But tonight, we are learning that Biden's legal team privately made their displeasure known to Attorney General Merrick Garland before that report was ever released. In a newly released letter, Biden's lawyers write, we object to the multiple denigrating statements about President Biden's memory, which violate longstanding DOJ practice and policy. The associate deputy attorney general responded a day later, writing, the identified language is neither gratuitous nor unduly prejudicial. It is offered to explain special counsel Hur's conclusions about the president's state of mind in possessing and retaining classified information. Special counsel Hur will soon get a chance to tell his side of the story. NBC News confirmed this evening that Hur will testify publicly before the House Judiciary Committee on March 12th. Joining me now are Jennifer Palmieri, co-host of MSNBC's How to Win in 2024 podcast, and Jen Psaki, host of MSNBC's Inside with Jen Psaki. It's a double thread of Jen tonight. Ladies, thank you <laughs> both for up, being here. <laughs> How, I'm just going to have to refer to you as Miss Psaki and Miss Palmieri. Um, this Jen is Psaki, why everyone in the Obama White House called us Psaki and Palmieri, because well, that, they, I not mean, only they we had a Jen, reason. We both Jen P's. They had yes. a reason. Uh, Psaki. Are you surprised, I mean, being um, a White House expert, we, as you both are, but about the level of combativeness that is on display between the White House and the DOJ and the fact that the DOJ essentially, it seems, did not heed any of the White House's complaints? I'm not that surprised. It spilled out a bit, obviously, in the last week. But there have been reported frustrations at moments um, that have been reported about the president's frustration, about the pace of movement on, say, voting rights and, and other, uh, other priorities for him. I would say for this, the view, it seems, from not just the White House, but a number of legal experts I've talked to, you've talked to, is that, well, Merrick Garland, the attorney general, was never going to kind of um, not appoint a special counsel. He decided to do that, although they're frustrated with that initial step, or, like, scrap the report or not release the whole report. There were steps in the process, including getting updates to see what the scope of what they were doing was. And also, there was language in there that, in the view, clearly, of people in the White House, but also nutshots by them, by other legal experts outside, kind of it went way past what his scope was and what he should have done. And there were things, as we all know, when we got the report, Alex, all of us were trying to read through it and scan through it, and it was unclear if, if he was saying or concluding that he wittingly um, kept the classified documents. You don't know until after page 200-plus that he didn't keep them, right? And obviously, this language is what has been taken out um, and used by Republicans as sort of a political dagger. So I'm not surprised that it's been a bit of vitriol. Uh, I, I am a little surprised it spilled out into public, but sometimes that happens with, with uh, situations like this that are, are of such great public interest. Yeah, the question of whether the president willingly <laughs> retained the documents is litigated in it, the, the conclusion is clear, but the, the summary makes it sound more nefarious than Unclear. quite obviously yeah. even her determined. But, but Jen, to the question of sort of the, uh, shall we say, talking out of school about President Biden, you know, the White House compares what's in this report to what James Comey did to Hillary Clinton. And it is right. a searing comparison. And it's something that it feels like Merrick Garland when he was sworn into office, what was going to go out of his way to prevent from happening again. Are you surprised that this kind of report came out of this kind of Justice Department? I'm, I'm surprised at the Assistant Attorney General's response, which, you know, I mean, I watch, a, you know, we all have, because we work at MSNBC, we have a lot of legal expert friends. And just the characterization that... Um, that uh, her made about about the president's state of mind and acuity and all of that, which is just like so be. I mean, it's it's even worse than what Comey did, right? In terms of uh, he, he, you know, he he criticized uh, Secretary Clinton's actions. He didn't go to her state of mind, and then you know, this, this is like a whole other this is a whole other level. So it is. Um, I think that, but you know, Merrick Garland. 
has not, uh, you know, has generally cited on, come down on the side of protecting what he sees as the independence of the Department of Justice, even if that, even if in this case, as you know, a lot of legal experts think, her is bent is 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 going in the wrong direction. He's not going to. He's not. You know, Garland's not going to step in to to stop that. Um, but what that assistant attorney general is arguing is pretty surprising. I do wonder, um, Jen. It sort of seems like uh, you know her is going to the hill. Republicans have mm, their knives yeah. out uh, on this. They really want the transcript, if not the audio yeah. of the interview released. It seems to me like a foregone conclusion that this is going to come out. Do you, do you think that we are going to be combing through five hours of interview transcript in the near future? And if so, you know, mm -hmm. how does the White House handle that? Jen Psaki. It, sh it sure feels like it, Alex. I mean, we'll see what happens. And just, you know, like they say about relationships, it's complicated because on one hand, if we, if everybody in the country who was paying attention to this was as nerdy and had as much time and it was their job to do this like all of us and we're actually going to comb through it, which we all will, then it might serve the White House well, right? But the problem is that that's probably not what's going to happen because people don't have time. And so what will happen is that small pieces of this could be pulled out. It's really hard to make an assessment about whether this is good or not because none of us have seen it, right? But that's the challenge, right, is that the way people consume information today, the likelihood is these two lines, this additional line, the audio of, of, of different pieces that would um, validate what her was saying, even though the context may be a longer line of questioning, may be that he had just come back from a call about uh, the, the attack on Israel. So that's the challenge for the White House. I do think, though, that Republicans who are out there spouting that they want her to come testify, they got to be careful about what they're asking for, too, right. because most of this report is not good for Trump, right? I mean, it clears Joe <laughs> Biden. There are parts of this that politically, as we all know, um, are over the top and are not are terrible for the Biden team. But there's also a very clear comparison from Robert Hur, somebody who is a Trump a pointy, right, that is making clear how Trump handled this in such a poor, un, uh, you know, uncooperative way. And he'd have to speak to that on the Hill as well. So I, I think this is also him going to the Hill is not a clear win for Republicans like they maybe think it is either. It's a double edged sword. But I mean, I do think, Jen, there is some utility, Jen Palmieri, there is some utility <laughs> in getting out first. Is there not? I mean, I think we've totally. learned that from the Bill Barr years and and even this report, you know, does the White House need to yeah. lead on this? Time and place of your choosing. It's like, yeah. right? It's like responding. Yeah. So what Saki would say when she was the State Department spokesperson, we will respond at a time and a place of our choosing. Yes. If the, on, on a if Friday the, evening. If, <laughs> right. At 5 p.m. If the, if the assistant attorney general's letter is getting out, the report itself is getting out. That is going to happen. And particularly, obviously, if, if the Hill gets it. And so I think that, you know, first of all, that, that her, I mean, Jenna's right about that her hearing, which is hard to say, that is not going to be a good day, I, I predict, for her or for the Republicans, because the facts, you know, the, the actual facts are on Biden's side. Um, the House Democrats are very effective in these committee settings at, you know, at, at sort of deconstructing same thing happened when Jim Comey went up to testify on yeah. Capitol Hill about his report. Mm -hmm. He got crucified. It was a very good day for the Clinton campaign. Um, and so I think the same thing will happen here. And, you know, the White House could figure out, you know, do they do that? Do they put it out the day of the hearing, the day before the hearing, you know, near the hearing, coordinate that with the House Democrats and present it, you know, the way, um, you know, with integrity this time, but the way yeah. Bob Barr did when he presented the Mueller report. You know, this, these are the things you need to have Bob Bauer Stand yep. up and say these are things you need to know, and package it the way uh, you know the that that is that is putting the facts in the in in the right uh, context. Jen Palmieri and Jen Saki, thank you, Jens, for your time tonight. <laughs>